Hello everybody and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will learn how to do an age detection in Python. First of all, what is age in a digital image? So here I have an image of letter H. If we plot the pixel intensity value in this uh, horizontal direction, we will get a graph like this. Here, the zero intensity is the black color and the 255 intensity is the white color. As we can see in this graph, there is a different intensity value in pixel 6 and 7. This is the age in the image. Simply, age is a different intensity value between neighboring pixels in the image. How do we detect an age in the image? First, let us take a 3 by 3 region of an image. Here, the Z1 to Z9 represent the pixel intensity value. Here, we want to know that pixel in Z5 is an edge or not. Once again, an edge is a difference between a neighboring pixel. So, we can calculate the difference or take the derivative between neighboring pixel. Because an image is a two-dimensional, we need to calculate the partial derivative or calculate the difference in x direction as well as in y direction. Here, the partial derivative in x direction is simply calculate the difference between the pixel, this three pixel here and this three pixel here. It's the same also uh, the partial derivative in y direction. It says this uh, equation calculate the difference between the pixel intensity in this region as well as in this region. Okay, if you read this uh, textbook, we can simply or easily detect an age in a two-dimensional image using a Sobel kernel or the Sobel operator. Here is the Sobel kernel to detect an age in x direction and this one is the Sobel kernel in y direction. So after we calculate the difference, if the gx or gy or the difference in the x direction as well as in the y direction is not equal to zero, then this pixel C5 or the center pixel is an edge, but if the partial derivative in x or in y direction is a zero, then this pixel value in this Z5 is not an edge. This is the example of the calculation. Here I'm using the image of letter H and let us take a 3 by 3 region from this image. Then we calculate the partial derivative in uh, x direction and in y direction. As you can see here that the gy is a non-zero, then this is mean that the center from this 3 by 3 region is a uh, edge. Similarly, here we take a 3 by 3 region in other part of the image and we calculate the partial derivative. Again, uh, the gy is not zero. This is mean that the pixel or the center from this 3 by 3 region is an edge. And if we take a 3 by 3 region where the pixel have the same intensity value, both partial derivative will have a value 0 and this is not an edge. So in conclusion, if gx or gy is not 0, then the center pixel here is the edge. And if the gx or gy is zero, then the center pixel is not an edge. To get the full edges from the image, we should apply the partial derivative both in x and y direction in all the images. Here is the example of the result after I apply the Sobel kernel, both the x and y direction kernel, through an image convolution calculation. This is the result for the x direction and this is the result for the y direction. And then to get the four uh, edges from this image, we simply add these two results. Okay, let us now move to Spider IDE and I will show the Python code. Here I am at the Spider IDE. First, let us import the libraries. Here I'm using NumPy, OpenCV, and matplotlib.pyplot library. So next, I create a function to display the image. So I don't need type all of this uh, line in order to display the image. 
Okay, let's run this code. So the second function here is to create the image with letter H in the center as the one that I show in the slide. First, I create a blank image which is uh, has a value as a zero. Next, I put a text in this uh, blank image using cv2 dot put text. Okay, let's run this function. All right. The next step is I create the Sobel kernel. Here, I create the Sobel kernel using numpy dot array. The first one is the Sobel kernel in the x direction, and the second one is the Sobel kernel in the y direction. Let's run this code. Okay, we can check this Sobel x, which is the Sobel kernel in the x direction, and Sobel y is the Sobel kernel for in the y direction. Okay. Okay, let's we create our input image using the function uh, this create image here. I named our input image as an I. Okay, so this is actually just an image with letter H inside. And then we use the function uh, this function display to display this image I. Okay, let's run this line code. All right. So this is the image with letter H inside, which is I create using this function create image. You guys can change with any letter here, like A or B, maybe three letter. Okay, you can do or change with any letter that you want. So after we create our input image, let us next uh, apply the Sobel kernel in X direction and in Y direction. First, I apply the Sobel kernel in X direction using cv2.filter2d. So this OpenCV function filter2d will apply a two-dimensional image convolution. Here, the input is image i, the kernel is the Sobel x, and then the d depth is negative one, mean that the output image will have the same image depth as the input image. Okay, let's run this code. Next, we display the result. So here is the result. As you can see here that this uh, kernel are able to detect the horizontal line, which is the edges from this uh, original or the input image. This uh, kernel also able to detect the round edges from the input image. But here, uh, there is a white color and a black color. So what does this color mean? So the white color here is the positive number, and this is, and the this black color is the negative number. So as you recall from the presentation that I showed before, the derivative will return mainly two value. The first is the positive, and the second one is the negative. And here, the gray color here actually is the zero because there is no different or no edges in this uh, region. So in order to get a better result or better uh, display representation of the edges, we can simply change any value that not equal to zero to any positive number. So here I apply um, some uh, logical operation, simple logical operation. So this here mean that uh, to find any pixel in this image that has value not equal to zero, and then I change this value to 255 or to white color. So this is line of code here, just simply uh, change this black color to 255, as well as this white color to 255 and left this gray uh, color as a zero. Okay, let's run these two code. First, we change the value and then we display. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. So I change the age here, the pixel value in this age to 255 and left this gray uh, pixel as a zero. And this is our result from the Sobel operation in the x direction. Similarly, we can apply the 
sorbel kernel in the y direction also using cp2.filter2d function so here we successfully de detect the vertical line from this input image and this is also similar like previously where the partial derivative will just run the positive number fairly large positive number which is represented by this white color as well as the partial derivative also return the negative number this is represented by the black color here and again this gray color here this the pixel with a zero intensity value and then we apply this uh, logical operation simply to change any pixel that has value not equal to zero which is the edges we change that value into 255 okay let's run this code so this is our result of the edge detection using the Sobel kernel in y direction and then we simply uh, add these two results to get the full uh, edges from this input image and again after we combine this uh, image so maybe have value larger than 255 and some pixel may be less than 255 so to get a better result we simply apply again the same logical operation here where the pixel value is not equal to zero or the edges we change the value to 255 and run this code all right so this is our final result as you can see here this uh, image show the edges both the horizontal line the vertical line and also this operation give us the edges in this uh, round edges from the input image so that's all from this video i hope you learned something useful from this video and if you want to copy or reuse this code i put this code in my github and you can find the link in the video description Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.